Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by ICOM. For more information, visit ICOMAmerica.com slash Ham Nation. And by DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. In-stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit DXEngineering.com slash Ham Nation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 186 for March 4th, 2015. Life on Navassa. Good evening, everybody. From the cold Ozarks, and they say it's going to be the last cold day tomorrow. Yeah, right. This is Bob Heil, K9EID, and you are in tune with Ham Nation here on the Twit Network. It's nice to be back and uh, um, get things happening. I got some... Uh, little bit of excitement here at the first but first we have some really cool guys hanging out with us of course go to california where i know it's warm gordon how are you wb6 in oa well i am fine we actually had some frozen white stuff land on the beach just down the street a uh, couple days ago not quite snow but the frozen stuff to get uh, most of us prepared for uh, the cold trip ahead bob back to you and then later on i'll tell you about all the things happening this weekend oh you got to be kidding it can't that it can't happen in california <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back down and see what's happening in mississippi george how are you i missed you last night on 75 huh yeah, I was listening. I just didn't say anything because I was working. Well, I've got on a short sleeve shirt here because it was in the 80s here today. But probably by the time I step outside after the show tonight, it's going to be freezing. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, uh, it's coming our way, so they say. Don, how's it doing down your way? Good to see you. Good to see you. It was uh, 83, I think, in New Orleans today, and it's actually 73 at my house right now. Tomorrow is supposed to be around 50, and then on Friday, only in the 40s. So, yeah, the cold weather is coming back. Hey, if you haven't heard yet, uh, there's a uh, Tom Medlin, W5KUB. On Tuesday night, it's a great warm-up to Ham Nation. It's called the Amateur Radio Roundtable. It's a weekly live webcast, and you can be part of it via um, uh, Google+, Plus, I believe. Uh, check it out, W5KUB.com. Uh, he's doing a great job with that and uh, seems to be gaining some traction. So check out the Amateur Radio Roundtable with, with Tom. That's on Tuesday nights. Uh, get your warm-up to Ham Nation, Bob. I, I met up the other night. I forget where it was. Uh, somewhere. Oh, he was on a Google Hangout thing that uh, Dan invited me to, 9LVS, uh, and he was telling me about it. Yeah, we'll have to check it out. Well, let's go back. I think uh, Gordo's got some stuff uh, of vital importance. So, <laughs> Gordo, take it away. I, I do. Look at this. This is pretty great. This is from hamshirts.com. Perfect timing now that the FCC uh, is no longer uh, doing call signs uh, in the mail. And, of course, hamcrazy.com has the neat plaques that they do. So, this is great that we've got uh, folks that are uh, selling neat things to commemorate our great uh, call signs that the commission is no longer issuing on paper as a standard routine. Well, last Sunday, Bob, of course, was the North Carolina QSO party, and we understand W4MPS said it was a great success. But it's going to be a busy Saturday around the country. This Saturday, of course, is the biggie. Ham Radio Outlet in Plano is their second open house. 
Ray of ICOM says the first one, even though the weather was inclement, was packed and it was fantastic. So Ray with ICOM, thanks for that great report. And we hope to follow up this coming Saturday. We'll have Phil, a partner of Kenwood, uh, Mick of Comet, ABR, uh, Jim with Lido Mounts, Daiwa. Uh, it's going to be a full house. And of course, I'll be there all day on Saturday signing certificates. Now, up in the Pacific Northwest, Mike and Key Club is having their flea market and their uh, ham radio get together on Saturday, uh, the same Saturday, and that's going to be in Puyallup. Hope I said that correct. And uh, also on this Saturday, the USS Massachusetts will be signing W1BSA. They're going to be on 7259, 14259, the 59, that ship's number. Wow, that's pretty neat. Then uh, also on Sunday of this uh, weekend, those of you back in the cold, um, actually, I understand it's a little warmer now, Long Island, the Long Island Mobile Amateur Radio Club, that's Limark, will be holding their spring ham fest at Levittown Hall in Hicksville, New York. So it's going to be busy. And um, next week, we'll tell you about what's happening on the 14th. Uh, I'll be in Palm Springs. But I look forward to seeing all of you this Coming Saturday, Ham Radio Outlet, a Plano brand new grand store opening. Bob, back to you. All right. I wish I could have been there. I, I had a plan for last week, but you know what happened there? DFW got closed because of ice. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, um, I, I want to share something with everybody. This is going to be a little tough to listen to maybe for some because it, it's not real strong. But uh, J.D. and I were on 75 meters as we normally do uh, after about 11 o'clock the other night and all signed. And well, J.D. and I were talking. That, that's in zero IRS, by the way. Um, we were talking about new hams and isn't it great that we're going to have this new segment on here? And you saw Christian last week. Well, he's going to, to host a new segment coming up. He'll, uh, he'll be finding some people. And that's one thing we want you to do. We're inviting you. If you're a new ham, uh, let us know. Send us an email. Uh, call us, write us, wave a flag. Because we want to have you on there to tell your story. And Christian's looking for stories. And uh, you heard his story last week, so uh, we, we're going to have him on here to tell New Ham stories. Well, uh, J.D. and I were talking about New Ham's, and all of a sudden I heard this signal way down under there saying, New Ham, I'm a New Ham. Well, here's the story. And let's see if you can, uh, I'm, I've got it on my computer. I want to share it with you. Let's see what happens. See if you can hear Paul. This is really cool. Okay. Um, Paul is a... Uh, uh, EID Bob. I believe you said your name was there. I wrote it down, but I can't read my writing now. Uh, KK4III Slant AG. Operator Paul, Palm Beach Fort, Sam Bosher. Roger that. Okay there, Bob. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, yeah, I forgot that part. Yeah, I became uh, a technician to my test in uh, 2012. Became a technician then, and... Uh, then uh, this last Sunday, uh, March the 1st, I went down to the Palms West Club. They have a club here called Palms West. And uh, I took my own own past it. Uh, what kind of transmitter and antenna you got, Paul? I'm talking to you off of a uh, FT2000 Yezu, uh, doing approximately 50 watts, with a uh, wire built myself about 132 feet. Riding it through an MFJ uh, versatiller, the versatiller five. Right. Check that out. New ham. He's got an FT two thousand. Made wow. his own antenna. This guy was in Florida, halfway across the United States on seventy five meters, and I, I was just thrilled to death to be able to be among some of his first contacts. And uh, JD and I talked to him for quite a while. And um, then underneath him, I, I kept hearing something else happen. And I'm going, I wonder who that is. Well, that was a mobile station. And I, I, this is a little bit tough. you got to understand. This is a mobile station in California with a hamstick and about 100 watts. 
I was. Coming up. Okay, do that. Give me I your call and tell me where you are. You're mobile, huh? That's amazing. great. What's your call? And he's been watching him, Nathan. And uh, oh, he was running this guy. <laughs> Okay, got it. LBY, that's cool. Well, we thanks for calling, that, boy. You uh, got a good Ryan signal. Are you copying him, uh, uh, JD? Uh, this is his, uh, no, you got a better spot than I am with those antennas. I can't believe it. He's coming in there really good. That's yeah. great. What kind of? What are you doing? What kind of equipment you got in there? So, can can help us wow. with all kinds of other things, but mainly how they got into the hobby. Uh, Gordo, how is that for a mobile signal from California? Well, I don't even think that we could do that with a communications van. So uh, Q4, but uh, readable. Yeah, and it was, as you said, it was a ham stick and, a, and a, uh, the uh, Alinko. I, just, I was amazed by that. But there we are with two new hams, and uh, gosh, it was a thrill for me to get to work them. Uh, I'm sure that um, we'll get to contact them again. But any of you new hams, let us know. We want to know what you have done and see if we can uh, make things happen in your world a little better and give you some advice. And Elmer, you along the way, I guess, is what we got to do. So... Don, you work a lot of Mobile, but uh, that was a pretty good shot for a ham stick and 100 watts across the country. What do you think, Don? Go ahead. That was awesome. That was uh, that was seriously awesome. I, 75 is a is a tough band to work Mobile. It's not like 10 meters, you know, where a short antenna will work. You got to have. I mean, it's a huge compromise to do 75 Mobile, and that that was awesome. That was that was really good. Yeah, I was happy about that. I thought, I thought everybody should uh, share my excitement. Uh, J.D. and I were thrilled, so uh, I wanted to, uh, to do that, and I, I hope that it came through. I know it's going to be a little bit tough, but uh, we, got to, we got to make it happen. So what else is happening in the old news world around the amateur radio bands? Don, I bet you know. I do, as a matter of fact, and why I prepared a brief report. Let's do that now, shall we? From Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 1,954, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, March 4th, 2015. Hams Down Under offered up a quick response after a strong cyclone came ashore. Here's Graham Kemp, VK4BB. Amateur radio volunteers with Australia's Central Queensland Amateur Radio Association called up emergency response nets on both the HF and VHF bands in the wake of Category 5 Cyclone Marcia that came ripping ashore the weekend of February 20. After making landfall, Marcia swept across Queensland, leaving 1,500 homes damaged whilst downing trees and power lines. Upwards of 50,000 residents were without electrical mains power, and the cyclone also interrupted several normal lines of communication, including the telephone service. Ham Radio was quick to respond with volunteers from the Central Queensland Amateur Radio Association. At the same time, several Wireless Institute Several Emergency Network, or WISEN groups, were on standby to assist emergency responders if called on to do so. News reports say that Marcia, which packed winds of up to 155 miles an hour when it made landfall, was one of two cyclones which hit northern Australia within hours of one another. No deaths were reported as a result of either storm, but cleanup efforts and the restoration of electricity in a number of storm-ravaged areas will likely take some time. Amateur Radio Newsline is seeking nominations for its 2015 Young Ham of the Year Award. For consideration, a nominee must have used amateur radio in some way that has benefited his or her community or encouraged technological development directly or indirectly related to communications. Nominees must be 19 years or younger and reside in the United States, including Hawaii, Alaska, and Puerto Rico, or any of the Canadian provinces. The individual must hold a currently valid United States or Canadian amateur radio license. The award is not a contest. The person selected as Young Ham of the Year is judged on his or her overall accomplishments and contributions. 
For example, a youngster whose only claim to fame is that of being licensed as an extra at age five would not necessarily be judged as having made a significant contribution to the amateur radio service. On the other hand, a 14 or 15 year old technician running a net during a major disaster or whose experimentation has advanced the state of the art in science or technology would definitely be given consideration. That's Jim Dameron, N8TMW. You'll find complete details on our website, arnewsline.org. Just click the Y-H-O-T-Y button. A record-holding U.S. astronaut has renewed his ham license. Astronaut Michael Fink, KE5AIT, recently renewed his amateur radio license through February 18, 2025. Fink served on ISS Expedition 9 from April 18 to October 23rd of 2004, as well as Expedition 18 that began October 12, 2008 and ended April 8, 2009. His last venture into space was on STS-134, the flight of the space shuttle Endeavour. That mission ran May 16th to June 1st, 2011 and delivered the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer and an Express Logistics Carrier to the International Space Station. At 381.6 days, KE5AIT currently holds the American record for the most time in space. And finally this week, if you have an older analog shortwave broadcast transmitter lying around and are wondering what to do with it, just ask the Voice of America. They found a novel use for one of their own and have created a program for it, as we hear from Kim Andrew Elliott, KD9XB. VOA Radiogram has broadcast its 100th program. VOA Radiogram is an experimental Voice of America program on which digital text modes familiar to amateur radio are transmitted on a 50-year-old analog AM shortwave broadcast transmitter in North Carolina. The idea is that shortwave radio can be used to communicate text and images when the Internet is disrupted by dictators, disasters, or other factors. In the early weeks of VOA Radiogram, digital modes were tested side-by-side, -side, including the various flavors of BPSK, QPSK, MT-63, Olivia, and Thor. Reports have been received from shortwave listeners and radio amateurs throughout Europe and North America, as well as Latin America and Asia, and even from New Zealand, 14,000 kilometers from the transmitter. Ultimately, it was MFSK that worked best on the shortwave broadcast transmitter. Furthermore, MFSK can be used to transmit images as well as text. Digital text works on any existing shortwave transmitter with no modifications necessary, and it can be received on any radio, including cheap portables with no sideband capability. For more information about the program, including the transmission schedule, visit the website voaradiogram.net. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for over 37 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. For Graham Kemp, VK4BB, Jim Dameron, N8TMW, and Kim Andrew Elliott, KD9XB, I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. All right, some good stuff. Hey, uh, Brian, if you look in the Dropbox real quick, I just dropped a, a, a picture in there, something that reminded myself I wanted to mention. If you remember last year, at the uh, at the rain ham fest we had an eight-year-old ham who came up to me and he had uh, was in the process of he was taking his test and he had just passed his test him and his dad and his uncle was there too uh sam kg5 ayi he just celebrated his ninth birthday on the 26th uh -oh. so uh, if you see that if you see that picture in the dropbox it's called sam if you can pull it up if not that, that's fine but anyway i wanted to, to uh, uh say happy birthday to uh, my little buddy sam haviland kg5 ayi over in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. He just turned nine and working on his general. So very happy uh, about that. I got to talk to him on Echo Link for, uh, for his, on his ninth birthday or shortly thereafter, which was very, very cool. So awesome stuff. Happy birthday, Sam. Now let's, uh, let's see what's going on with our friends from ICOM. From new models to classic radios, there's something for everyone this season. So get out or hunker down with ICOM. Celebrate ICOM's 50th year with the IC7850. Only 150 units are available, and each radio features 1.2 kHz optimized roofing filter, a new local oscillator design with improved phase noise, several spectrum scope enhancements, and distinct gold accents on the front panel and commemorative label. For contesters just starting out this year, ICOM's IC7600. You get advanced DSP technology and IF roofing filters, dual watch on the same band on an ultra-wide 5.8-inch display.
Got cabin fever and need to get away? Get mobile with ICOM's IC2730A and ID5100A. The analog 2730A mobile and digital 5100A with built-in GPS. Both feature optional Bluetooth capability for hands-free operation, 50 watts output power on both VHF and UHF, and a large backlit screen. For entry-level D-Star operation, take the ID888H on the road. Features include a good menu structure and VHF-UHF dual-band functionality, one band at a time. Time. To hunker down or get out, the ID51A Plus is a perfect radio to enjoy global communications. This dual bander has the free downloadable RSMS 1A Android app, enhanced DV functionality, and additional D Plus reflector link commands. Make sure you visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM's base stations, mobiles, and portables. And you can tune in and enter to win after each episode of Ham Nation. Go to icomamerica.com slash ham nation. Throw your name in the hat for some great swag prizes like T-shirts or hats. You can also enter in there what you think about Ham Nation, what you like, what you don't like. And Ray does look at those messages and replies to most of them. He's run a little behind this week, though. But uh, anyway, for March, the grand prize is going to be the IC2730A. It's an analog dual bander with optional Bluetooth headset, 50 watts on both VHF and UHF, dual band, dual watch, a large backlit LCD display, and a lot more. So sign up, good luck, and don't forget to follow ICOM America Incorporated on Facebook and Twitter. And you know, this past weekend, I didn't make it to the Plano um, grand opening up there, but I did make it down a little further south in Texas to Orange, Texas, and visited with the people at the Orange, Texas Ham Fest. Brought a little bit of footage back of that. You know, wherever you go to a ham fest, you're going to find some familiar things no matter where you are. And I was fortunate enough to attend the Orange, Texas Ham Fest this past weekend and got a few great shots of the action. For you newcomers, here's a universal rule when attending a ham fest. The first thing you want to do is find the barrel where the door prize tickets go because most ham fests have some nice door prizes and radios that they're going to give away. You're also going to find a lot of friends, both old and new at these events, and some you've never actually met in person before. Even though I live five hours from Orange, Texas, there were still a few people I already knew there and a lot more people that I know now. That's one thing about amateur radio. No matter where you go, You've always got friends. Most ham fests have forums or gatherings and presentations, but just as important is the vendor and flea market area. Some of the new dealers present here were Houston Amateur Radio Supply, Palometto Antennas, and Main Trading Company. Of course, I've always got to take a tour of the used gear. You'll usually find a variety of power supplies, antenna tuners, radios, and accessories, but there were some real jewels here that you don't see very often. Like this Litine Radio Model 240 transmitter from 1952. Wow. The owner bought it with $69.95 of his hard-earned newspaper route money, and he wasn't about to sell it. Now, there's some real heavy metal in this thing. There's test equipment, too. How about this Heathkit Decade Condenser in an attractive wooden box? And that's a fluke bench meter sitting beside it. Now, here's a couple of real capacitors. This is the kind that you'd find strapped to the bottom of a broadcast transmitter. For perspective, these things are over a foot tall. Here's a piece of test equipment that I really used a lot during my early days of working on audio gear. An ICO Model 147A signal tracer, complete with speaker, watt meter, RF demodulator, magic eye tube, and more. And these were especially popular with those of us who couldn't afford an oscilloscope. And from the old but mint condition department, here's a Clegg 22 or FM rig. I don't know the date of this, but I'm guessing sometime in the 1960s, and this one looks pretty well preserved. Of course, you'll usually find at least one table with used CB gear at most ham fests. 
Hello Crafters was a real popular brand from the past, and you'll find these in all conditions and prices. These were in the fixer upper class. And at a lot of ham fest, you're going to find some very unique amplifiers, like this custom built Henry Radio commercial linear. This thing could loaf all day long at two kilowatts and never break a sweat. So all in all, I had a great time during my visit to the Orange, Texas Ham Fest. And, you know, they do things a little different down there. It's not just the Orange Radio Club that puts on that Ham Fest. It's them and the Jefferson County Amateur Radio Club primarily, but also other clubs in the area like Beaumont. If you're going to be in the South this time next year, you might want to stop in at the Orange, Texas Ham Fest and have a look around. You'll be glad you did. Well, and I really had a, a great time at that event this past weekend. And they're having a, a ham fest coming up in Houston before long. I don't have the date right in front of me here. But, um, you know, anytime you can go to a ham fest, you're going to have some fun there. And uh, like I say, great bunch of guys down there really had a blast. And looking at some of that gear, I didn't show you all of it. But, uh, you know, showed you a few pieces there that kind of caught my attention, particularly that signal tracer. Bob, have you ever used one of those before? Actually, George, uh, Bob had to take off a little early. Okay. All right, then uh, we'll just skip that part. Or I'll ask Gordo. Gordo, have you ever used one of those signal tracers like that? Oh, or yes. I've had a lot of ICO test equipment, and some of those uh, ICO pieces really brought back some great memories of the AM radio days. Oh, yeah. There, you know, There's a lot of good ICO gear out there. Uh, and that one in particular is, is something I had used before, but I, I've seen their scopes and a lot of their other test equipment, too. But anyway, uh, let's carry on now and get to our contest. You know, last week I asked a question, and this came from uh, the, uh, I believe it's the technician question pool for your amateur radio license. What reading on an SWR meter indicates a perfect impedance match between the antenna and the feed line? And your choices were A, 2 to 1, B, 1 to 3, C, 1 to 1, or D, 10 to 1. And we had a winner on that, and it's Jim Beard, AE5ZZZ. I like that call sign, Jim. Uh, he said the answer is 1 to 1. And congratulations, Jim. You're going to win this copy of the Boy Scouts of America Merit Badge Series Electronics. Great little book there with some introductory stuff on electronics is, uh, you know, stuff to get you started as well as uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, potential careers you might find in electronics. So, Jim, before you give this away to a Boy Scout, take a look at it yourself. I think you'll like what's in there. We'll be getting that out to you this week. Well, I won't be here next week, so we're not going to uh, start a contest uh, right now. We'll come up with something good, though, next uh, time I'm here, probably in a couple of weeks. So anyway, um, that's it from here tonight. And I think it's time we brought in Val and see what's going on in the DX corner. Hi, everybody. Yep, well, tonight we're going to talk about a, quite a few different types of things. First, we're going to start off with, I know I've talked to you already about LOTW to try and get your confirmations and how to deal with outgoing QSL uh, cards. So next we're going to talk about a couple different ways, other different ways to get confirmations. If you want to go ahead and roll the uh, incoming video, Brian. Now we're going to talk about confirmations. Not that kind or that kind. No, we're going to talk about DX <laughs> confirmations. Now I've already showed you how to do Logbook of the World and outgoing QSL cards and there's the episode numbers if you need to go back and check it out. We're going to start now with how to deal with incoming QSL cards. All right, so you've been DXing and contesting. What next? Well, you're probably going to start to get some cards incoming through the Bureau. You may even have some there that you don't know about yet. I'm just going to let you know how to get started getting set up with the incoming card Bureau. Now, this is through the AWRL and local clubs and volunteers who staff this in your call area. You don't need to join the AWRL and the service is free. The only cost is the postage for them to get those cards to you. 
So you're going to want to either send them a self-addressed stomped envelope or a bunch of them or just a check. Like I send my card guy a check for 100 bucks, and he'll let me know when I start to run low. Now, here's a list of the volunteers who sort the cards in your call area. So if your call has a 2 in it, you're going to want to con contact the W2 or the NJDXA showing there. Same thing, there's a 1, a 3, and a 4. There's volunteers for every call area, so you're going to want to be sure to note which one is yours, and you can contact them. You can also Google some of these uh, clubs, and they'll have more information on incoming cards. And, of course, you're going to need to make a checkout to the club or group listed. And then it includes uh, some of the U.S. territories there and, and shortwave listeners. And next, we're going to talk about OQRS, or the Online QSL Request Service. Now, if you want to utilize the OQRS system, you'll need to go into clublog.org. Now, if you've never been into Clublog, uh, you want to go ahead and register. It is free to use, and there are a lot of great tools. So once you get uh, registered, you want to log in, and then go up to the Expedition tab at the top there. And it's going to list for you, in date order, the most recent at the top, uh, all the current the expeditions going on that are utilizing Club Log. Now if you'll notice on the far right side some of them have little green shopping carts next to them. So now if you if I go up to Guantanamo Bay, I just made some QSOs with him this past week and I click on that little shopping cart, go ahead and put my call sign in, it's going to bring up all the QSOs I made with Guantanamo Bay and there they are. If you mouse over it's going to show you the operator that you uh, worked as well. So I'm going to go ahead and request my QSL from him. Now I have the choice of either going direct or through the Bureau. The Bureau is free, but direct it's going to only cost me for this one $3 for the first card and the additional ones are free. So I might as well go order all three and then click on the green icon. And then it's going to take you in here. And this is where you can put if you are using a QSL manager, you want to put in your grid square locator, and if you want to send them any additional funds in addition to that $3, here's where you can do that. And then you want to order the QSL, and now it's going to take you directly to PayPal. And once in there, you just want to go uh, complete that and uh, make sure your address and everything's up to date, and voila, $3, I just got three cards. Pretty quick, pretty simple, pretty easy. All right, now we're going to talk about con Oh. Talk All right, that was it. All right. Now that uh, you can do that, maybe um, once you start getting cards coming in from the Bureau, um, well, not actually in from the Bureau, when you get cards coming in direct, you may get some of these. Does anybody know what these are? These are IRCs or International Reply Coupons. Uh, so there's two different things you can do with these when you get these in the mail. They're going to send you their card. They're going to want you to send them a card back, and they're giving you this. This is worth a dollar and ten cents, but you can't really use it. It's a it's just a piece of paper. So there's two different things you can do. First thing is you can save this when you need to get a card back from a DX entity you worked overseas, and they accept IRCs. You just fill out your QSL card, a self-addressed envelope and toss one of these in there, and that'll give them the dollar and 10 cents they need to send you a card back. The other option you can do is to take these to your local post office, and you can redeem these for stamps. Now, when you do take them to the local post office, you, there's a good chance they're not gonna know how to do this. So I have a, a little step-by-step -step guide. Uh, if you wanna show that, fir that first slide, Brian, and that, I'm going to try and get that on the wiki page for you, but that you need to either write down or print off if I get it on the wiki page and take that with you to the post office and hand that to the postal worker because it, it, it's, it's kind of shocking how many of them there do not know how to handle these IRCs. So you can take these in and these will become stamps for you. Uh, coming up next, I have... Um, I, I belong to quite a few clubs, one of which is the Metro DX Club in the south suburbs of Chicago. And they have a pretty cool award that they give that, that you can apply for. And it's called the WUST Award, uh, which stands for Worked All U.S. Territories. If you want to show that next slide, Brian, that um, 
if you can, if you've worked 14 out of the 16 U.S. territories, you can qualify for this Worcester Award. You can just go to MetroDX.com. You don't need to belong to the Metro DX Club. This is available to anybody that has confirmed 14, at least 14 of the 16 U.S. territories. And this is what you'd get if you show the next one, Brian. And that's your award. And uh, it's a very colorful award for all you awards chasers out there. And if you notice, there's a couple of fairly recent de-expeditions on here. So maybe you've qualified for that. If you look in the lower left-hand corner, there's Wake and Navassa. Also, Swain's Island is on there as well. So uh, kind of a cool thing if you're into uh, awards. And as far as DX goes, uh, coming up now, uh, as a matter of fact, in the next day is Eritrea. If you want to show that next slide, Brian. Eritrea is right on the eastern side of Africa. It's very rare. They're going to be there from the 6th. Show that You can show the next one too. They're going to be there from the 6th through the 17th. You want to show the next slide, Brian? There you go. Um, and uh, which is in about a day. So get your ear to the radio because they could come active within the next 24 to 36 hours. Uh, also coming up, uh, I didn't have a chance to do a slide for this one, but uh, South Sand or South Georgia, uh, VP8 Delta Oscar Zulu, he just came out on the air today. I worked him on 17 meter phone. Uh, for my 288th country, so that was kind of cool. But um, he is the only ham there. there there's, an, there's a team there. They're on the world's largest rat poisoning project. And uh, <laughs> South Georgia Island's actually in the South or the Antarctic region. I'm not really sure if it's sub-Antarctic or Antarctic, but it's right down there along the border of the Antarctic region there. So, uh, this is very rare. Who knows how long he's going to be there. He seems to come up about 20, 30 Zulu, 20, 100 Zulu or, or UTC. And um, he was on 17 meters today, listening down and going by the number. So make sure you listen. He's doing split. He's all by himself. Um, and he's got massive pileups. So here's your chance to work those guys. And last... You know, as you know, Jerry and a bunch of guys, they just went to Nevada and they came back. Well, Jerry took the GoPro with him and he had a little fun and he has a lot of video from Nevada. So Jerry and I were really busy this weekend. We uh, took all that video and we got it down to a short little four minute video so you guys can see what life was like on Nevada. You want to show it? Here we are on the first helicopter flight in. Congratulations, Glenn. Jerry, good to be with you. Good to be with you. I'm looking at Europe right now here. That's our shot to Europe. Glenn, do you want to uh, describe what we're seeing here? This is Lulu Bay. We look straight down. There's a structure, a catenary structure over here that used to have the ladder. They climb up this 40 feet by ladder. Okay, looks like we got a team here to do some work. This is all engineered by AA7 Juliet Victor. And our goal is to move all of this gas generators equipment and get it out into the area where we can uh, haul it off with the helicopter. Okay, we got uh, Craig uh, going into the shower here. What a beautiful day.
W2GD out there uh, moving an antenna, rotating a Yagi around. There's K6MM supervising. There's the lighthouse. American flag at the top. Here's a bunch of uh, the wire antennas. Uh, there's a six meter antenna. There's Ralph Kayser IR. Here's the uh, Navassa Power and Light. Some more <laughs> of the um, Stepper to Element Yaggies. Dipoles all over the place. They all work extremely well. the uh, last helicopter in to take the last three of us off. I'm really ready to go. That's pretty cool video. They made uh, over, what, 135,000? 140,000 wow. CUSOs on that uh, de expedition. And those last three operators, Craig, uh, Jerry, and uh, Glenn, they pretty much operated about 22 of the last 24 hours. Uh, and they brought in a lot more uniques uh, that last day because they were looking for uniques only. And uh, Jerry was the guy who put that flag up on top of the lighthouse. Way to go, Jerry. And uh, that's all I have uh, this weekend. We have the AWRL DX contest, sideband. Uh, that's a really big one. That's the one where I won the world. We bro broke the world record when we went to uh, Sable last year. So uh, get on the air. It'll be a fun contest. And that's it for this week. And I think uh, here's my best Vanna White impression. Now let's hear from DX Engineering. Lovely. <laughs> a lovely lady and a lovely oh. hand model and a hell of a DXer. That's beautiful. Wow. Thank you, Al. Wow, that's, that's awesome. You know, amateur radio, like, like a lot of hobbies, can be pretty technical. I, I'm, you know, if you're just wanting to get into, say, guns and you pick up a gun magazine and you don't know anything about it, and you start reading all this stuff, it's like, what are they talking about? Well, flying is the same way. Scuba diving is the same way. Well, ham radio is kind of that way as well. And if you're a new ham, just, just entering the hobby, it can all be kind of confusing. Well, DX Engineering has some excellent starter radios for you from ICOM that will really simplify this. Now, they're not only good entry-level units, they're packed with enough features to keep you from outgrowing them, and that's important. They're going to last for years. You're going to enjoy them for years, and they will perform excellently for years for both new and old hams alike. There's one that is referred to as the Swiss watch of the two meter HT world, and that is the ICOM VX80 Sport. It's two meters, 144 to 148, plus has a built-in weather band receive capability. It's rugged, reliable, perfect for camping, uh, the local repeater, five and a half watts of RF, plenty for line of sight simplex and the repeaters. It also has a, a really powerful audio amplifier. It really booms out the sound. It, good radio is no good if you can't hear it. And you're going to hear this one, even in noisy areas. So it's great for public service events. If you're out, say, uh, doing a marathon or something, you need to hear that audio. This is a great radio for that. And also, it's powered by standard AA batteries. You can also get an optional battery pack, too. So that's the neat thing. If you're out and about and your batteries fail, you can just run into the nearest Walgreens or whatever and grab you some batteries. Don't have to worry about charging a uh, nickel metal hydride. Another one, if, if you want to go dual band, get 2 meter and 440, is the ICOM IC2730A. It's a great cutting edge dual band mobile, and it works just as good in your house as it does in your car. 50 watts on both 2 meters and 70 centimeters. A lot of those 70 centimeter radios are 35 watts. This one's 2 meters on both. Expanded receive range gives you weather, marine, utility, aviation, and a lot more also. It has uh, simultaneous receive capabilities. That means you can keep an ear on two bands at the same time. Built-in duplexer lets you use a single antenna for multiband transmit and receive. Simplifies things. Also has a built-in CTC and DTC tones 
for quiet standby and repeater access. And there's a Bluetooth option. It's a lot of a lot of hams are embracing the whole Bluetooth thing for hands-free operation. Again, very important in a car and can be just as important at home. Using a mobile radio like the 2730 as a base station is also a great way to build a VHF UHF setup. You're going to need a reliable power supply, though, and not all power supplies are created equal. DX Engineering recommends the Astron SS series, specifically the SS25. It's a switching power supply. It provides the necessary 13.8 volts at 25 amps. It's clean. It's EMI filtered. Uh, very little QRM on this radio either. Signal noise. It's, it's a really, really quiet uh, power supply. And the SS25M adds a pair of dual analog meters to give you your voltage and your current. Remember, DX Engineering, not just for the high-power HF contactors and DXers. They have something for everybody. New hams and uh, the old salts alike who want to hang out on the VHF, UHF bands. DX Engineering also ships faster than anybody else in the industry. If you get that order in by 10 p.m. Eastern, and if it's in stock, it will be on a truck headed your way tonight. Proven products, expert advice, DX Engineering helping you shrink the globe. Grab your catalog or go online 24 hours a day, seven days a week at dxengineering.com slash hamnation. DX Engineering, thank you so much for your support of Ham Nation. You really should pick up a DX Engineering catalog. These are, these are awesome catalogs. There's all kinds of uh, information about uh, the gear that they sell in here and just some some great just all-around gear for about Ham Radio in here as well. It's, a, it's informative and colorful and has nice pictures. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you, DX Engineering. Amanda, I bet you've got some DX Engineering stuff over there in your shack. I do, indeed. I I love DX Engineering, by the way. Uh, yeah, got a sticker on the wall back here, and I shared some of them with some of my, only my closest friends, by the way. Um, well. You have to be very special to get one of my DX stickers. No, I'm kidding. Of course, everyone can have one. Um, <laughs> okay, you guys, I do have some questions. I had a couple for Val. We were trying to get her back. Not so lucky yet. So we'll go to some of the announcements I have. Um, first, KD9 ANT. He's 16 years old, just upgraded to general. Congratulations. That's awesome. Can't wait to hear you on the bands there. And just in time for the DX contest, by the way. That's very cool. Um, other than that, there, I had a lot of um, questions for Val. So I'll send this one out. Somebody had asked on chat, uh, do IRCs even exist anymore? George, do you know? I think that's what Val was holding. So, yeah, I guess so. Okay. I, I think they still exist. I had read, uh, I go to a lot of QRZ pages when I work somebody, a DX station, and they say no more IRCs or um, not through the Bureau either. So kind of hard to get those cards to those guys. I guess you have to send it direct with cash. Uh, that's some of us feel that's a little bit difficult. Um, anyhow, Mr. Don, um, I did have a question for you and now I forgot it. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> I was really well, excited that's Belle okay. to be on here. <laughs> I apologize. And, uh, let's skip the crabs question. Don knows what I'm talking about. Um, Oh, I do have a fun, <laughs> fun story, though. Uh, Ray Novak wanted us to share this because he heard a lovely story. So if I switch from looking at you guys to reading, uh, I apologize, but I do have to read the story. It's very cool. Um, in Zero QET, back in 1974, uh, he was about 13 years old. He decided he wanted to get on two meters after he saw a quad phase two meter boomer array on top of a 100 foot tower in his aunt and uncle's uh, next door neighbor's yard. He used to lie there uh, in the afternoons and just look up at it. And when he finally saw the oh antenna rotate, that's what hooked him for sure. And um, Don had said, wow, that sounds a lot like um, uh, Joe's, uh, Joe Walsh's uh, exact story about how he became a ham radio operator, seeing his neighbor's antenna tower and saying, ah, I wonder what that's for. But he actually went next door and asked him, what are you doing with that, man? So that was pretty cool. Thanks for the story, Ray. I'm glad uh, people love to talk to you and uh, share their stories with you. So, and Bob, by the way, and Gordo, love to hear your stories about how you got involved in ham radio, especially after if you did it after watching Ham Nation. Um, and I, we've heard quite a few stories like that where people have just said, I got my license after watching this show on Twit. 
awesome. I, I can't say much more about that. Um, that's just the coolest thing. What do you think, Don? Absolutely. I get emails about that as well. Um, people saying, hey, uh, watch uh, been listening to you on Newsline for a while and, and uh, just discovered Ham Nation and uh, and it, uh, you know, pointed me towards getting a license. And yeah, that's that's just cool as that can be. We, we all love hearing that stuff. So uh, our emails are real easily uh, gotten. Just look us up on QRZ and most of our emails are on there. And feel free to send us anything. We uh, we love getting the feedback. That's for sure. Oh, absolutely. And Val is back. Yay. Thank you, Val, for coming <laughs> yeah, back. I, I appreciate that. I put everything away. Hang on. I have no lighting. My umbrellas are all stored away, but I'm back. All right. <laughs> what do you I got really, for me? I really appreciate that. Well, first of all, you would know this better than anybody. So somebody, um, let me go back to his call sign here. He wanted to know, Frank KM1Z, he wants to know, what is an actual good contribution to one of the de-expeditions? He asked about Navassa Island specifically, but I'm thinking you would know, what's a good donation for us regular workers of a DX uh, expedition, uh, what, how much money do you donate typically? Um, typically $10,000 is a good donation. No, I'm kidding. What, what <laughs> I'm is like, it worth to you? Oh my gosh. Uh, okay. <laughs> what is it worth to you? I mean, they, they come up with a price usually. Um, I usually try and give at least, I give 25 to $50 the bigger ones I'll give 50, the smaller ones I'll give $25 because these really are expensive. Um, if you got them on 16 bands, I would think 25 should be. Oh, uh, we know. All right, well, we've had we've had a good night. We've had some, some technical hiccups here and there, but that's okay. It's what live TV is all about. But uh, you've been with us and, and we appreciate that. And uh, let's see, uh, check out, uh, I'm not sure where all the nets are. I'm not sure where the 40 meter net is. But uh, I do know that uh, the digital nets, you can find those on Star, Drew Drop In Star on the uh, on Echo Link. And that's also node 355800. And if you're on D Star, it's Reflector 14C. Uh, I think if you go to Ham Nation 40, uh, Google Ham Nation 40, you'll find out where the 40 meter net is. And 3847 looks like on the uh, with, with Cheryl, uh, K9BIK, uh, she'll be on there. So uh, there you go. And, uh, oh, it looks like George is back. George, you know where all the nets are tonight? Uh, well, the best I know yeah. is is probably the same thing you just said. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Okay. So, there and you, welcome there back you to go. You guys. Yeah. Hey, well, I, 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 think, uh, I, I think we better wrap this up while we're all still here before <laughs> yeah. before the rest of it goes away and the, uh, the, the ghost in the machine uh, raise their their heads again. So uh, for for Bob and Gordon and for everybody else, thank you again for being with us here on Ham Nation. We we couldn't do it without you, and we do it for you and 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 with you. And your participation is is key to this. So feel free to email us, uh, catch us on Facebook any way you can. Get us on the radio if, if you want to go on Facebook and and request a schedule uh, for just about any of us. I'm sure that we would be more than happy to uh, to accommodate you because. Uh, uh, it's, it's all about ham radio. It's all about talking on the radio. So, good night, everybody. For uh, for all of us here at Ham Nation, we'll say seven three, and thanks for being with us.